we're back to biomarkers, and uh, clearly many flowers are blooming, to quote Chairman Mayo. We have so many biomarkers. Dave went through them in a rapid fire way earlier, and I'm here to talk about uh, one that you probably have not heard about, which is actually uh, more of a platform than a specific biomarker, and it has a lot of uh, potential for diagnosis and risk stratification in a number of urologic cancers. It's uh, made by MIR Scientific. Uh, my disclosure that I am a consultant to MIR Scientific. And the, the basic platform uses urinary exosomes that contain microRNA. So the exosome story is something that's really exploded up over the last five years or so. These are microvesicles. A typical cancer cell will shed thousands of these per day, and they contain important biologic material. I've been interested in them for a while because uh, some evidence emerged a few years ago that uh, exosomes serve as a form of intracellular communication between tumor cells either within the same gland, like one prostate cancer to another in the same prostate, or even from the primary tumor to metastasis. And there's evidence, for example, that exosomes containing inactivating uh, microRNA taken up by a more indolent cancer cell may confer more aggressive behavior, meaning really fascinating biology. And so the exosomes contain uh, RNA, protein, uh, enzymes, and these are biologically active molecules, and they are shed into the urine. And the molecules of interest are the microRNA, wrong direction. So there are more or less two categories, the, the small microRNA and the so-called SNORs, which are small nucleolar RNA. Both of these are, in are of interest. You can see the difference in size. These are coded for. There's been 1,700 genes identified coding for microRNA, 1,521 coding for the SNORs, the small nuclear polar RNA. The SNORs are in two types, the so-called SNOR-D, so small nuclear RNA uh, uh, type D, and it's called CD box. The box refers to this kind of frame of the target RNA that more or less encloses the snored, and it acts either by methylation in one case, by uh, pseudouridinylation in another, and these influence cellular fu function. They influence the degree to which the messenger RNA is active or inactivated. And interesting, we heard earlier a, a great talk about uh, the V7 variant. Not that much is known about actually where does the, what, what triggers the differential splicing in men on ADT, and this is thought to be uh, a function of the microRNA targeting the uh, androgen receptor uh, messenger RNA. So these are very key biologic molecules. Uh, basically, cell-free urine is collected. It's quite simple. The pellet spun off. RNA is extracted. It's analyzed, this curve basically shows the size of the microRNAs and the amount for each size. And then the Affymetrix microRNA chip is used, and this does a whole uh, microsome sequencing of these exosome microRNAs. Uh, 6,600 approximately are sequenced. So that is the basic uh, generic assay that's done, and you can see there is this is a heat map that essentially should, the subjects here, uh, the microRNAs here, so you do get segregation uh, according to clinical parameters. And this was some of the very early validation, uh, the very early uh, kind of analytic studies that were done. So the platform that's been developed by the company is to basically take a group of patients, do the entire panel of roughly 6,000 microRNAs and pull out the somewhere between 50 and 250 microRNAs that predict for the presence of whatever you're looking for. And this could be cancer versus no cancer. It could be 
insignificant versus significant prostate cancer. It could be bladder cancer. It could be kidney cancer. And you get for each uh, clinical scenario a panel of microRNAs, and each one is iteratively added, and you get what they call the sentinel score. Uh, that is a measure of the disease severity or the likelihood of having the disease. So it, it's essentially like a uh, uh, hundred or two hundred and fifty individual tumor biomarkers, each one of which has incremental value. And uh, this has huge potential. So I'll just show some of the very kind of initial data. Uh, this just to shows the different the different classes of microRNAs. You get both the snores, the larger ones, the microRNA, and pre-microRNA. Uh, all of them are assayed, and all of them potentially contribute. And then uh, this is basically fully automated, done on an open array plate. You can test uh, 12 samples per plate. They can run approximately four plates per run and four runs per day. So uh, roughly uh, 240 patients per day. It's potentially a very uh, high throughput, uh, relatively inexpensive assay. Uh, so I'm just now going to show you some of the preliminary data. This is based on around 3,000 patients. These mainly came, uh, the, the um, laboratory is based in Albany, New York. A lot of the Early work was done in collaboration with them and Downstate University, and now this is expanding. But this is preliminary data on about 3,000 patients. A third had prostate cancer, two thirds did not, based on systematic biopsy. And this is the separation. And this data is, is really extraordinary. The sensitivity and specificity both above 95%. Now you could say, how can that be? Because we know the uh, um, for example, the, the negative predictive value of a negative biopsy is only around 75 percent. Uh, in other words, some of those no cancer patients are going to have cancer that you don't know about. But the separation here between the negative and the positive scores is really extraordinary, almost too good to be true, and yet that is the data. Sorry. I'm sorry? Dr. Stone has something to say about apparently there's an argument both ways, but since I have two minutes left, I am, I am not, uh, okay, thank you for that. Um, some might call Dr. Repeated, Dr. Crawford's repeated reference to this perseveration, but I'll leave that to the psychiatrist. Uh, <laughs> so, this, this shows uh, uh, the, the second panel that's been developed to differentiate insignificant from significant cancer. The company's first, uh, I would say, uninformed view was that we need to, to find out who has prostate cancer. Obviously, today, we don't want that kind of an assay. We want an assay for significant cancer. And here you see there's a few outliers. Uh, this is the ROC curve. I mean, it really looks extraordinary. Area under the curve, somewhere around 0.9. And, um, this is the actual performance, so more than 95% sensitive specificity, 93% sensitivity, uh, and this was the distribution of the patients who actually had the, the significant cancer. So uh, there's a lot of technical aspects to this which I don't have time to go into, uh, but essentially one of the advantages of, of this compared to other approaches it doesn't rely on assumptions about pathway. You're not looking specifically, for example, at cell cycle genes or proliferation genes or invasion genes. It, it, it basically takes a, uh, t t makes no assumptions about the function of these microRNAs. It simply looks at their predictive value, identifies the ones that are most predictive and relies on that. Uh, it, it, is, uh, it can be tuned with training data. It doesn't overfit the training data, meaning that uh, you, you don't have the problem of uh, uh, large data sets with, therefore, a, a subsequent uh, lack of uh, specificity. And it's quite versatile, diagnostic, prognostic, companion diagnostic, and so on. So uh, this is coming. 
the assay is being validated. They are ramp, uh, ramping, uh, uh, rolling out uh, validation studies involving thousands of patients at, at Martini Clinic, where urine has been stored on thousands and thousands of patients having a radical prostatectomy with long-term outcome, Memorial, our place, and uh, we should hear more about this going forward. Thank you very much.